Well, hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Amplify Your Career. Welcome, come in. Let me see where you are chiming in from. We've got Florida, Texas, Nebraska, New York City, beautiful day, and Minnetonka. Wow, I lived in Minnetonka for a very short time, many, many years ago. So I'm happy you're all here today. We have an awesome topic. I'm Joan Burge. I'm founder and CEO of Office Dynamics International. We are a global leader in the development and presentation of sophisticated training programs and information for administrative office professionals. And we have been doing this for 32 years. Woohoo! Yes, a long, long time. Let's go over a few logistics before I get into today's topic. So first of all, the learning part of the session will be about 40 minutes. And then I'm gonna be very eager to take your questions about today's topic. If you do have questions, you could place those in the chat throughout the webinar, or you can wait until the end. That would work fine. And what else? We will send you a replay link following today's webinar. So welcome, yes, keep coming in. Happy birthday, belated happy birthday. Thank you, yes, I just had a significant birthday and that's what I wanted to tell you all about is that uh, August 16th was a big milestone for me. Oh my gosh, can't even believe it. Well, my careers have also been a significant part of my life. I started working right out of high school. I knew I wanted to go to work right away. I did not go to college. So I wanna tell you a little bit about my two main careers and then how those careers helped me. How did they benefit me? And then talk about how do you keep your career exciting and interesting and don't become stagnant in that career. So again, I worked for a really long time so when I got out of high school, I knew I wanted to be a secretary uh, right away. And so I started out as a receptionist and I worked in the administrative profession for 20 years. During that 20 year time, I worked in 12 different companies in five states. Now you might be thinking that I was a bad assistant. Why did I have so many jobs? especially in those days, if you showed a lot of jobs on your resume, it really didn't look good. Today, it's more common for people to jump around. But why I changed is because one, I was an eager, hungry assistant. I wanted to grow. I wanted to learn. I wanted to excel in the profession. I wanted to reach higher levels. You know, I started out as a receptionist and eventually worked for CEOs which was part of my um, strategy and what I wanted to do. Some jobs I changed because of my husband's career. So my husband had a very active career and he would get promoted into other uh, positions or organizations and we moved out of state. So that created change. And then two jobs I lost because of downsizing. So that wasn't my fault. But I had an amazing administrative career. And the good news is because I worked in so many different offices, different industries, different businesses, I really broadened my uh, view. I learned about different organizations. I learned about different styles of management. I had to learn how to interact with a lot of different people and met a lot of wonderful administrative assistants who I admired. Um, it also taught me or I learned about different relationships with different managers and executives. And that's what led me to understand that there are strategic partnerships and then there are just relationships where you just work side by side with that executive. So um, keep coming in and thank you all for the happy birthday belated wishes. Thank you. Thank you. So. Uh, that career was very important to me and I wanted, like I said, to learn and grow. So after that, what had happened about the 18th year out of a 20 year career, I started to think about what 
I wanted to do next. Um, I had had so many wonderful experiences and I, I don't know, just one day I was like, all right, you know, I don't know what I want to do next, but I want to move on and do something else. And so through exploration with a good friend of mine at that time, I decided I wanted to go into training and teaching assistants how to be great assistants. I mean, I had the hands-on experience. I had a range of experience. I studied a lot about the profession. I would go to administrative conferences too during that time. And I even achieved my designation from the uh, Professional Secretaries International, which that name has changed now. And so uh, I moved in the training into the training industry, which was you know, really foreign to me. Although when I was young, I always wanted to be a teacher. And I'm not gonna go through my whole 32 years, but I have been in the training industry for 32 years, uh, better known as adult learning and um, doing coaching and writing. And I'm sure many of you know the range of things that I have done with Office Dynamics. So I'm not gonna go into that detail, but I can tell you, like I said, my careers have always been very important to me. I am a career woman. Um, and it was never enough for me to just have a job. It wasn't about just getting a paycheck. In fact, I had left one or two jobs that weren't a good fit for me because it wasn't about the money. I took one job that was 10,000 less than what I was making when we moved out of state one time. So it wasn't so much about the money, it was about the fulfillment that I got. And so I wanna tell you, here are some of the things and the benefits that my career did for me or my careers and why our careers are so important. And then I'm gonna get into strategies, how to amplify your career, how to keep it interesting. So for me, my careers, the what I learned and the work I did carried over to my personal life. You know, as assistants, so many of the things you do, travel planning, calendaring, working with vendors and different providers, learning to negotiate a schedule, all of that, that carries over to our personal lives. So those, uh, it wasn't just that I was using those skills at work. They helped me tremendously in all facets of my personal life. What about event planning? How many of you have planned events for your, your work, for your businesses, right? I did a lot of event planning. Well, I am a great event planner when we have family events. They're awesome, actually. People, the socialization, that was tremendous for me and still is today. And I feel a little sad that people aren't back in offices because that is one thing about going into the office. It was that buzz. It was that socialization that we had on the spot, not having to schedule a Zoom meeting for someone. Now, I will say I still have people contacts. I still socialize, but I have to work at it. I have to push it out there. I have to initiate it. But throughout my entire career, um, I met so many phenomenal people and many of those relationships I still have today. I have one relationship is 30 years uh, now that I've been in touch with this one lady in Virginia Beach. I mean, we became very good friends through business and we've hung on to that relationship. And when you build your, your relationships, people are there to help you out um, and to be a resource and you learn from them. So let's see, Julie are saying, yes, this is sad. We had over 350 team members before. COVID on site, and now we'll only have 60. Uh, yes, and I, I want to just say that, you know, the hard part, employees are saying they don't want to go back to the workplace. And a lot of reason is um, because it feels like a ghost town. Well, if more people would go back to the office, you wouldn't have that feeling, you know, so there are definite benefits. What are some of the other benefits I gained? My career in all these years built my resilience. You know, when you're an assistant and also in the work that I do and owning my own business, you better believe I've had to build resilience. I've had to be resilient to September 11th, 
and how it affected my business and to the 2008 economic crash and to the pandemic. But even as an assistant, I had to build resiliency, correct? Is that not true? Think about the ways that you build resilience. You have to be resilient to people's attitudes. You have to be resilient to the work that is thrown at you. You have to be resilient to the constant change. So I'm sure all of you could relate to that. Um, wow, we have someone from South Africa. Oh, hi, Susan. Another benefit the networks. Like I said, that goes back to the people. My networks were immense and they're still immense. It's really important to have that. Um, other benefits of my career is fulfillment, just fulfillment of a job well done. One thing I realized um, in reflecting on my life there are so many times throughout your life where people are not going to be available. Things are going to happen. People you love are going to be gone or they're going to move away or things are going to change or people you work with are going to leave. So I always look at who do I have is myself, me, bottom line. And so my, my work is very, very important to me because that's the only thing people can't take away from me, you know? It's mine and I could put into it what I want and I get great fulfillment from what I do. And that brings me joy. It gives me purpose uh, when I wake up and I know you're all gonna be on and know that you you depend on me and you want information from me and you want my help. And I have no plans of retiring at all. Uh, what else? I developed a huge range of skills. I'll move on because we wanna get to your tips. And just so much, I had so much challenge and I had so much fun at company parties. I traveled on our corporate jet. I got to go uh, plan events. I went to the Caribbean. I mean, so your careers can be very fascinating. So let's move on as far as that importance of building, you know, a thriving career, but amplifying the career you have. And we all know if we've been working for a while, how do we keep it interesting though? How do we keep ourselves fresh? How do we stay excited and, and wanting to pursue our careers? And again, I think these are unique times. If you look back at the past two and a half years, especially now, what are you going to do? So I have six tips for you. So are you ready? So number one, is to see your career as a progression. If you see it as something that progresses a career, if you have a career, not just a job, you evolve in your career. You learn, you grow, you stretch, you look for new opportunities, you take on new challenges, and that's what keeps it interesting for us. So how many of you would say, uh, or I don't even have a poll to put up right now because I didn't, didn't know I wanted to ask this, but if you feel you have a career versus a job, put yes in the chat. How many of you feel like you, you want that career, you have a career, you own your career? Um, this, now, I will say within that, there are times you plateau. So it's not like you're constantly moving up you know, or climbing up that mountain. Good, I'm happy to see. Yes, 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 yes. There are times where I know for me, I plateau. I'm just kind of coasting along, you know, doing my job, doing a good job, but there's not a, a spike. And that's okay too, because, you know, we have to catch our breath, don't we? We need to just coast. Maybe we need to fine tune what we're doing. Um, and then you're going to, you want to make that little move up again, because that's what keeps you excited. That's what keeps you interested. So yes, yes, yes. No. Oh, Maureen. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Mary. Hi, Mary. <laughs> All right. Number two, and I'm going to show you a visual in just a moment. So number two is to strengthen your skills. So the idea is to strengthen what I call the fundamentals. The fundamentals are the things and the skills that you use almost every day. 
So think about those um, and what some of those are. And I'm going to actually share those with you in just a moment through a visual. Even if you've been in the profession for a long time, 20 years, 30 years, you should always fine tune and polish your fundamentals. Don't think, oh, I've been doing this for 20 years, so I don't need to pay attention anymore to that. You know, I could do it with my eyes closed. That's not the right kind of thinking, you know, because actually today our fundamentals are even more important. Um, so I'm going to show you in one moment and I'll expand on that. And then number three is where we add to our skill set, where you diversify. So let me show you what I'm talking about. And the, the image I'm going to share with you is something that is in our Star Achievement Series course. That's our flagship training program for assistance. So this is where we display this and this is where um, we talk about it and learn it so let me see if i could pull this up for you and if you've been in the star achievement series this may look familiar to you although i've updated this just in the past month so at the bottom here these are our foundation competencies and I have updated, I believe, two of these. I've changed the terminology. So these are the, the typical uh, things that assistants do on a fairly regular basis, correct? So let's look at these a moment. And again, it isn't saying, oh, I do that and I do it great. It's more if you're a star performer, you're looking at how can I maybe streamline that process? How can I do it better? How can I do it faster? What new things are out there that are going to help me be more effective in this area? So you've got appointment coordination. We all know what that is. But I will say right now, challenging you with this because a lot of people are going the app route and using platforms for scheduling and where they're just use dropping dates in. Well, do you see if you're a star performing assistant, you don't do that. You look at the calendar holistically. You use your critical thinking skills. Um, communications, we all know every single day, and that's all facets of communication. Information management is a new one I added. I used to have something else in here. Um, it might have been telephone or something, but really that's what you do now, correct? every single day, and I can't see you in the chat right now, but every single day you're managing information. You manage the flow of information. Where does it go? When does it go? To whom does it go? So you got to start to see yourself as what we call an information flow manager. And you don't want things to get into a bottleneck with information. You've got to keep it all flowing and moving. Uh, manager support, we know that, of course, meeting, planning. Now, of course, we've added in over the past two years, virtual meetings and getting really good at that. Maybe some of you are not only planning the meetings, you are leading a meeting. So that's a whole area. Again, if you're going to amplify your career, don't look at these like, oh, I've done this for years. I, it doesn't matter. No, these matter. Um, you're an office liaison. So this one is, is new. Um, and I'm using liaison because you're not necessarily in the physical office all the time, but you need to be the liaison. You are, you need to be the one connecting everybody to each other. Well, this is harder in a virtual environment. It's not like you're in the office. So now you're connecting people virtually and remotely. Um, let's look at some of these other ones. I won't go through every one of them, um, but look at your task management. And even though, again, you have all these wonderful tools, we have these amazing tools to help us and with project management, uh, you still have to, it's your thinking about it. It's still where you have to know what to prioritize, how to prioritize. So don't only look at, let's do something else here. 
when you look at these, don't just look at what it is, what skills do you need to do that effectively? So that's an area that may challenge you. So let's say for, let's just take task management, for example. What skills do you need to manage tasks? You have to be a good decision maker. You have to be a critical thinker. You have to know how to prioritize. You have to know what's important and what isn't important. You need to know when to say no when your plate's too full, when you're not gonna be able to get it done. So do you see behind each of these, you need several skills. What skills do you need to be that office liaison? You have to be an excellent communicator. You have to be outgoing a little bit. You know, you can't hide in a corner or hide in your house if you're gonna be a liaison. Um, so that is something else, you know, for you to look at and if you're looking at how to challenge yourself, you know, the rest of this year and moving into 2023. So now these are the foundation, remember? And let, let me tell you something else about foundation skills. It's like a building, a tall building. It has to have a very strong foundation. If not, as they have the floors, there's going to be big problems. So these are your foundation. Now, these are what we call the advanced competencies that you build on top. So this was my, my number three tip to add to your skill set. This is how you keep yourself, again, your career fresh, how you keep it interesting, how you continue to stay challenged, how you grow. These are some of what well, we teach all of these. So this is where this all comes from. But um, results driven. So let me talk about that. It's it's beyond the problem solving. It's where you're you're driving results. What are the results that you're trying to achieve or your executives trying to achieve and then you have to work backward. Career management. Everyone has to manage their own career today. So how are you doing that again? Um change agent this is a really good one so we always talk about change and how do you work through change but now broaden that expand on that to where you're the change agent you're not waiting for change to come to you you are seeing what needs to be done and you are creating it you are being the catalyst strategic partner i've been talking about that for I, since the early 2000s um, and now it's coming up more and more about building those strategic partnerships. Critical thinking is coming into range more for administrative professionals. So you can Google that and find out what critical thinking is about. Um, let's go on the emotional intelligence. I'm sure you're hearing more and more about that. Persuasion skills. This is a good one. A lot of administrative professionals even top level sometimes don't see themselves as salespeople. And you really need to learn to be persuasive and learn how to negotiate, not only with your, uh, I'm not talking about vendors necessarily, it's even with your coworkers, it's with the people you support, it's even your executives. Attitude management, we've got resiliency has been hot for several years, but really has come to the forefront, especially with everything that's gone on the last two years. Collaboration is different than teamwork. They're not the same. So teamwork is down here in your, your fundamentals, okay? Collaboration, some of the things with collaboration, there is no specific leader. Anyone could be the leader in collaboration. It's where everybody brings a unique set of skills to the table and you figure out how to get the job done. It doesn't necessarily, it doesn't have a game plan. Teamwork, there is a plan. You have a path. Collaboration, this is more what we were doing when the pandemic broke out. We didn't know what was going on. There was no game book, you know, and what to do. Leaders didn't even know what to do, right? We had to collaborate and figure it out. So, um, this is where, again, you want to add to your skill set. You want to be diversified. And then this is just something, again, because this is in our Star Achievement Series 
course in STAR, uh, we focus on for achieving excellence and standing out, it takes a combination of skill, attitude, teamwork, and strategy. So, and those are all layered on top of everything else. So let me stop sharing and hope this works. It's slowly taking its time. So I hope I get back to you soon. All right, where did everyone go? There you are. All right. Okay, let's see. What do we have coming up? Being proactive. I think office liaison along with communication is very important. Thank you. Oh, not easy to do in a small office. We can see you. You are back. Yay. I never know because I don't share slides a whole lot. So what did you all think? I'm curious when you saw that visual. Did anything stand out for you? Does anything come to mind? Um, any thoughts? Did you see a particular area in the advanced competencies that you thought, oh, I need to look into that more. That's an area I can grow in. Anyone, you can type in the chat. <laughs> I want to see what your reactions were to that. I like being a change agent. Oh, it was too small. Oh, I'm sorry. It's an eye opener to see just how many of those skills we use. Yes, you use a ton of skills. You liked information management, persuasion, got me motivated, excellent reminders of all the skill sets. Yes, it's so broad and that's not even everything, right? Change agent, resource management. Oh, I like that one, Angela. That's a really good one. Strategic partnerships, persuasion, collaboration, wow. Professional behavior, that's an interesting one because so many things have become casual. So it's not going away, actually, because we still need to have professional behavior when we're in situations like this, when you're in the chat, um, when we're in our, our virtual meetings, we still need to maintain that professional behavior, correct? A lot of soft skills are power skills, power skills. Yes, I'm going to talk about that shortly, but good for you, you ladies, and maybe gentlemen, you get stars for noticing that. Um, okay, very good. So let's go on to number four, what you can do. This is, which ties into what you just said about power skills. The word is to fortify, fortify your intrapersonal and interpersonal skills. So we have used the term soft skills for forever. I know 32 years for sure for office dynamics because that's what we teach. We don't teach the technical in terms of getting into the specifics. Um, we talk more big picture about technical and, and digital. So Soft skills are the combination of intrapersonal, that's within ourselves, interpersonal is within others. So interestingly, we all know that when the pandemic hit, tech skills moved into the forefront, way into the forefront, right? It was probably your whole life for quite a while. And then through uh, 2020 and 2021, people were still very involved in technology and, and developing those skills and working through the processes. We're still doing that today, of course, but not to the degree we had to do when we started this journey in 2020. So what happened in January of this year the soft skills now being referred to as power skills moved to the forefront. In January, all of a sudden, I started seeing articles on other administrative websites, on administrative association 
articles and blogs, they were talking about soft skills as power skills. And then I belong to the Training and Development Association, which they're the authority worldwide, globally, um, in the training and development area, adult learning area. And they had this huge article about soft skills are significant. And it's a four page, four page or five page article. It blew me away in a good way too, though, because it was, yes, the soft skills really are power skills. Because if you think for a moment, if you are equal to other assistants in your tech skills, you all know Teams, you know how to use Excel well, and uh, OneNote, how do you stand out? Where do you stand out? This is where you stand out, or with your power skills. So I just wanted to tell you um, some of the power skill areas. They had done a, LinkedIn had done a lengthy, extensive survey. It was the end of 2021. It was their uh, workplace learning report. And so here are some of the, they listed 11, but I'm just gonna share with you some of them. Resilience and adaptability was number one. Number two, of course, digital fluency. Number three was communications, which we talked about. Number four, emotional intelligence, we just talked about. Um, this is where I read about energy management. So it's not just time management now, it's how we manage our energy, which is really interesting and important because I know when you, we're sitting at our computers all day long, do you not feel tired by three o'clock in the afternoon? I know I am. I'm like, wow, I've been looking at this computer all day. You know, pre-COVID, I used to be up in a classroom, moving around, moving my body, interacting with other people. And not, not that I was out there all the time, but I was out there a lot. So now day after day after day after day, you know, you sit in front of a computer if you're working from home. So it is about how do we manage our energy and push that forward because that keeps you enthusiastic about your work. And sometimes we don't have the physical energy. So you've got to have the mental energy. You start with the mental energy pushing yourself out there. And before you know it, the physical starts to follow. So I, does that make sense so far? Uh, Herminia, yes. Hi, Herminia, it's good to see you. It does have to do, you're right, with health. It has to do with awareness. And I don't know how many of your organizations are not putting emphasis on well-being because that's another hot topic. I see that a lot in my human resources, uh, daily newsletters, where they're talking to organizations, you need to really pay attention to your employees' well-being. So, all right. Um, so with the Fortify, we've got that down, right? Power skills, that's the area you wanna develop. Then the next one, number five, interestingly, I have put forth personal energy. So I was kind of just talking about this. But if you ever feel bored, stagnant, um, or overwhelmed, a lot of times we lack energy. It's just boredom sometimes. And when we do the same thing over and over and over and over, it's easy to get bored. And then all of a sudden we're not enthusiastic about our work. Maybe we're not doing as good a job. Maybe um, we're making you know minor mistakes, but they're still mistakes and we get flustered with ourselves. So this is something also we talk about in our STAR program about the energy piece. And the idea being, so let's take these one at a time if you feel bored. Well, I do get bored too. I mean, I've been doing this for 32 years and there are certain courses or classes I teach over and over and over and over. Do you think I cannot get bored? Of course I do. So what I do is I look at what new spin could I add to it? Like the next time I present that topic, what can I do to shake it up a little bit? 
to make it interesting, even though the audience has never heard it before. Because I know if I'm bored with something, I'm going to come across differently in my presentation. So I've got to figure that out. And that's what I do. And then it becomes interesting to me. So you could look at your work. And I'm going to do try to do a little fun activity with you with a cush ball. Um, let's look at stagnant. Maybe you feel stagnant in your career. Maybe your job has changed a lot since the pandemic. And you don't feel as challenged. And you maybe feel like you're not getting utilized. Your skills aren't getting utilized. Maybe you feel like there's nowhere to grow or nowhere to move in your organization. So again, it's up to us to figure out how do I keep things interesting? You know, what do I do in the meantime, if you are maybe looking for something else? Or those of you who are going to retire, I saw some of you about coasting until I retire. Well, you still need to be doing something until you retire. Don't rely on the fact that two years from now you're going to retire and you're going to go along your merry way because things change. Our world changes. We change. Circumstances change. So you're going to be in trouble if you just go along your merry way. Um, let's look at overwhelmed. I know I definitely feel overwhelmed at times. In fact, the last few months, we've had, I think, five major projects all merging together, all with tight deadlines. Three of the projects were immense, immense. So I was writing a new book and I revamped two of my books. Um, I'm coming out with a second edition this fall with our inner circle assistant and underneath it all. I wanted to modernize it for today's world. So you can definitely become overwhelmed. And that's where we have to kind of step back and catch our breath. And um, instead of letting those tasks and projects overwhelm us, we have to kind of say, well, I'm just going to go in today and I'm going to tackle you know, these three things and I'm going to get these off my to-do list and I want to have that check mark, right? So, um, all right. So another way we put energy in is through creativity. So we're on number five. I'm going to do this with you quickly. This is something that I use in one of my classes. We use it uh, for creativity when we're teaching creativity, which we also build into problem solving. So we're going to do a little different version with you because I've got how many of you out there? 800 of you out there. So um, I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to put into the chat, type into the chat. What could this be other than a cush ball? Okay, we know it's a cush ball, but I want you to think about the possibilities. What if we made it really big, right? It could be a bouncy thing. What if you made it really tiny and put a string on it? I could have earrings. If I put a pin on it, I could have a brooch. Uh, it could be a shoe decoration. Thank you. A dog toy, an earring, keep going, a stress ball, a wig. Yeah. What if you even took the pieces apart and cut them up? We could have confetti. Uh, what else? What else? Disaster relief. Come on, keychain. Uh, pom pom. Yes, pom pom. Stress ball, definitely. A duster, a scrubber, a clown nose. Keep going. You're doing good. Oh, keychain to hold your keys on. Yeah, these are awesome. Whoa, spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> a necklace. Thank you. I could add it to my necklace. You're doing awesome. <laughs> All right. Okay. These are awesome. Awesome. So the purpose of this activity is to get us to think about the possibilities. Don't see things as you always see them. That's when they become boring. You know, if we see something the same old, same old way, then we become bored. Then we become stagnant. Then we don't have the energy, you know. So the idea is <laughs> you have some good ones in here. Sorry, I keep looking at him, a skin exfoliator. Thank you. So the idea is, as you go through your day, you go through your work, to ask yourself, 
How can I streamline this process? How can I make this simpler? What if we play the what if game in our office? You know, like, what if we did this? What if we tried that? What if we took this on the road? Like our world-class assistant course I only taught in Las Vegas for years in person. And then Brian Burge was saying, well, what if we take it on the road? What if we take it to different cities? What if we do that? And we started to think about that. And then before you knew it, uh, we had it in eight cities throughout the country and we're filling those classes. So that will keep you energized. That helps you um, stay enthusiastic because just think about it. If you're not enthusiastic about your day and they could all, they all start to blur together and then everything becomes home, ho hum. So your enthusiasm is, you know, important. So let me see where am I? Okay, that was number five. So let me go through these. Number one was to see your career as a progression. Number two, strengthen your fundamentals, the skills, your fundamental skills. Number three, add to your skill set. Number four, fortify your power skills. Number five, put forth your personal energy. And then number six, augment. The word is augment. That means to supplement. So you can supplement your career with these five ideas. This is what I thought of, and there's probably more. But number one, your LinkedIn profile. You know, that's a supplement to your career. So do you have a LinkedIn profile? Are you keeping it up? I know I need to actually go in and update my profile because everybody's using that now. Everybody is looking at our profiles and even not necessarily for job hunting, but even people who are meeting new people, they go look at the your LinkedIn profile. They want to know about you. They want to see who you are. So if you're building your networks, you know, people are going to be viewing that. Obviously, if you're looking for a job, people are going to be looking at that as well. So that's how you augment your career. Another way to augment is with a career portfolio. So if you've been around long enough, you know that I have talked about a career portfolio for years and we teach it in some of our courses and we even have a downloadable ebook for it now. Um, your social networks are critically important, especially if you're in a hybrid environment, you're only going in one or two days a week, especially if you're working from home all the time. You've got to put in that effort. Uh, this is part of your career because if you don't, you it may impact you in the future in a negative way. And then I'm almost done. Then we're gonna go to questions. I, I marked quality devices because I was thinking about to do our jobs and do the work to make sure you have quality tools that you need, your phones and your iPads and all those different things. And then last, of course, augment your career through training and development. I mean, that's just got to be what we do today. And, and we've said that actually for several years, but now more and more it, it's growing in uh, importance. So that was number six to augment. All right, Malia, are we ready? We're gonna go to Q and A, and then I just have a couple announcements of what's coming up um, that I wanna share with you. So let's see what we've got today. I'm curious. Okay. And hopefully I can answer them all. <laughs> yes, you will most definitely be able to answer them all because you're brilliant. <laughs> okay. Um, so Fabiola would like to know, is there a suggested timeline of when to hone these skills or start with what we feel we are lacking strength in? Uh, I would start with where you feel you're lacking strength. I would go right to that start building that and then in the interim you know weave in a little bit of the uh other skills you know keep your eyes open if you get announcements about webinars that are coming up on those other skills if you could attend those 
you know, sporadically, that's a good idea. Or maybe you see a good blog, you know, about that. So you're, you're building that, but your prominent ones will be the ones that you feel you really need to put attention to right now. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jill wants to know if you could please give her an example of professional brand. So professional brand comes in uh, different ways. Professional brand could be our outer brand, our image of what we project, how we choose to dress. Okay, so that that's definitely right there. As soon as we go on camera, as soon as we walk, people see it immediately. But our professional brand could also be having a positive attitude. If you always have a positive attitude, that's a part of your brand. Um, maybe you have a calm demeanor. That's another part of your brand. We also brand in our communications. Really important. And I can tell you people have gotten really sloppy with their emails. They don't even say hi or hello. They jump right in. Hardly anyone puts their contact information on their emails anymore, which is very frustrating for people who actually need to contact you. So um, it, there's a, a whole facet now that we're going into brand because I've been put connection with them. Uh, she spends time on the phone. She doesn't rush them. She'll answer all the, her questions. So do you see our brand comes out in a lot of ways? So you want to make sure you're projecting the brand you really want to project. Yay. Uh, Sushma would like to know, do you think collaboration management is also a vital part? Collaboration management. So I'm not sure if she's meaning collaboration management with the management team or talking um, about managing collaboration. If, if it's collaboration management, meaning managing collaboration, we don't really manage it. Collaboration is a very fluid, natural process that just occurs um, and where you merge ideas together. I mean, you're thinking about something, but again, there's no force. It's not forced. Uh, so like, for example, when we collaborated on one of my books, a few years ago, Greatest Secrets Revealed. We had the photographer, we had the, the book design layout person, and we knew we were putting out a book, but we didn't really know all of what was going to happen. And we just started talking and collaborating, coming up with ideas. And before you know it, we were forming the physical a look of the book. If you're talking about collaboration management with the management team, um, yes, you can Again, because it's not really forced, but the, what you do is show your talents to the management group so that they can see maybe where they could utilize you and fit you in based on your talents and your skills. Okay, thank you. Uh, Patricia would like to know, how do you handle a leader who doesn't want to engage with you? I support five people. Four of them see me as a partner, but one is purely transactional. So uh, I hate to say it, some are going to be purely transactional. Now you can try to teach them how to work with you, which I know I did in my, when I was an assistant and it was later in my career and I was working with an executive who just never had had a great assistant. So little by little, I had to really show them where to utilize me, how to utilize me um, kind of push myself into their world little by little by little. And then they started to see the value of that. But there are some executives who they just don't want that. So you have to decide, obviously, if you have to support this person and you don't have a choice, then I would just, then you've got to view it as a transactional relationship. Um, but I believe maybe on our website, I know I've done some little pieces about how to train your leader, how to train your executive. And if you Google our website, you might find something on that. There may be an article. I know we did a little video on that. So that might help. Okay. Uh, Mary Jane says, uh, how do you advance when your VP asks you to help manage her calendar, but she doesn't allow time to meet one-on-one? -on -one? and you feel stuck 
doing repetitive departmental tasks and not growing to be an executive assistant. And also she tends to go to her old executive assistant who is now a manager for collaboration, planning and general support. Oh boy, these managers, they need training. And to be honest, you need to get them our book in October. It's coming out October 19th, which talk about, and I know that's not the answer you wanna hear, but I hear this question so many times. And this is where as the individual, as an assistant, you need to develop assertiveness and also learning about communication and how to craft the words to get their attention. And the one-on-one -on -one time, it's really hard. So, I mean, you've got to start out being able to get one meeting where you're one-on-one, -on -one, where you have an opportunity to state, here's what I'm observing. I'm observing uh, that one, we're not getting to have this one-on-one -on -one time, which is really critical, and here's why. You have to explain the benefits to them, why that one-on-one -on -one time is so important. And that is something we talk about in the book. And um, getting them to see that value in it. And then it's this whole conversation because these are the conversations I have with executives. But you've got to get their attention first. Prior to meeting with them, you've got to script it out. You've got to write out the words that you're going to say and position it in a way that they want to hear you or listen to you. And just state your observations and talk about, I can bring far greater value to you if you will let me manage the calendar, if you will let me handle this for you. And then you ask if they will at least give it three weeks, at least try it. Sometimes they're not willing to make all these changes overnight right away and that's what we do in our coaching work we slowly bring the executive on little by little and then after they've done that for three or four weeks now they're in these new habits and they'll do it on their own so there's so much more to that question but that's you know what i could tell you right now in brief format um Malia, just real quick, I just want to tell everybody, I'm so excited you're sharing your LinkedIn and uh, interacting with each other. So that's really cool. Okay, another question. Okay, uh, Jane wants to know if you have any suggestions for a 30, 60, 90 day plan for ramping up with a new executive you're supporting. Um, yeah, well, I don't have one mapped right out. But what I would do is uh, typically start out with the very, the basics. You know, what are the absolute need to know, bringing them on in terms of the core tasks. So remember how we were just looking at um, calendaring appointments. I would start there because those are what we call the tactical. So there's tactical work you do, there's strategic work you do. So start with the tactical, which are the day-to-day -day and find out what their preferences are. So what are your preferences when it comes to calendaring? In other words, what are there days of the week you absolutely do not want any meetings? Are there times of the day? Like I don't wanna have any meetings really on Monday that take a lot of energy and thought because I'm just ramping up. So if I have, there's an important client out there, I don't want to do that on Monday well. So if you say, well, I know what works really well, you know, in the past or has worked for me is when my executive and I have a daily meeting, touch base, five minutes, 10 minutes, that's all it is to sort out the day's priorities, confirm that we're on the same page. So share your best practices. Then I would ask them about their peculiarities, especially what do you not like? Okay, there are certain things that set me off. And I'll usually even tell people when they're interviewing before they come on as an, a hired person. Like if I'm really into time and you arriving on time, that's going to bug me if you don't. So it's good to know up front. And what do they really value? What's important to them? So I would start with those and get that foundation going. 
and then you know move into as you get to understand their work and what they're doing and their personality and their style continue those conversations and then move into more the strategic work where you're getting to know what they're doing why they're doing it getting to know the context around it so then you can be more proactive and anticipate wow okay so that's the short answer <laughs> Yeah, um, we'll do, do one more. Okay. Um, I want to give a shout out to Boeing. They have a large group that are watching you oh, together. Hi, Boeing. Our and friends Boeing. Kimberly is sharing a question from somebody from the Boeing WebEx chat. And the question is, is there ever a benefit to remaining anonymous in these types of roles? Oftentimes we serve as the focal for our executives and teams and yet we don't always get recognition or are shown appreciation. Yes, uh, it's unfortunate that does happen. Um, I do wanna say one thing, while they may not visibly show you the appreciation, they may feel it inside. A lot of times managers aren't good at verbalizing their appreciation, um, but they, are thinking it. So the other way I also look at the thank yous or appreciation. If your executive continues to, you know, add more things to your plate, trust you more, that's also a way of showing their appreciation. They're just not actually saying it. As far as the anonymous, um, I don't I don't think it's ever really good to be anonymous. I think people need to see you, to know what you do, to know your talents, to know your gifts, because you never know down the road if something happens and they might connect you to someone else. So I had that happen to me, you know, in a company I worked at and they were uh, downsizing and rearranging, well, unbeknownst to me, some other executive and some other department and some other area of our floor had observed the great work I was doing as an assistant. And when our company was starting to let go of people, he referred me to his wife. He was a human resource manager at a big bank in Memphis and they needed a, an assistant for their CEO. So you never know, you know where that might pay off somewhere else down the road. So um, let's quickly wrap up because I see some people are getting are heading off already so just really quick uh the announcements first of all thank you so much for your participation today so speaking of those soft skills or power skills because i read all this information earlier this year i decided we would launch um, a mini series course and it's going to start october 26th there are going to be seven 90 minute sessions it's called the significant power series or power skills series. And one of our awesome trainers, Julie Reed has put that course together and she is going to be teaching it and she's amazing. And the seven topics are business acumen, resiliency, interpersonal intelligence, energy management, critical creative thinking, collaboration and communication. I think I'm losing my voice, Malia. Um, so again, that's something you can sign up for. It's going to be great. It's going to be interactive. I've seen her content. It's amazing. And then our in-person conference we have in October, the seats are filling up. I'm so excited. We have 300 already who are going to be coming to Las Vegas from all over the world. So if you're interested in that, October 18th to the 21st. And the hotel room block is going very fast. So if you want to get in on that, you should move on it. There is a live stream option for conference. And then September 22nd, our webinar, there's an amazing executive, young executive assistant I met, and she's going to be my guest. And she's going to talk about executives edge book. Okay. I, every time I talk about it, I know we get a lot of asks for it. Um, well, so here's, here's two things that I, I will say. One is the book will go live October 19th on Amazon. 
So if you can wait that long, we'd love to get everybody going to Amazon and getting the book because that will bring us up in the rankings. And that means the book will become visible when other executives or leaders are looking for the book. And of course, we want that book out there. We want to teach executives why they need you and how to utilize you. And I have a co-author who's amazing. So if you can wait till October 19th, um, if you want to do pre-order, I know I didn't discuss this with my team, but you can reach out to Malia Mira. Sorry, Malia, I'm giving you away here. You can call Malia, let her know you want a copy. We're going to have some hard copies in our office mid-September. Um, so those are that's what I would say. And we hope all of you will buy the book when it's out because we really, really, really have to get executives and business owners and CEOs to recognize your value and know how to utilize you in this new world. I walked right into that one, didn't I, Joe? I know, I'm sorry, <laughs> yes. It would be a great gift for Boss's Day. Yes, you know, we've talked about that. We think it would be a phenomenal gift for Boss's Day. So if you want to get it and uh, have it for that, you can, Malia, do you want them to call you? Do you want them to email? Either you? way, they can call or email me. I'm I'm right here. <laughs> so her email is M for Malia, Amira, A-M-I-R-A. -A. You can put it in the chat, Malia. Yes. Um, yeah. But again, then, and then we want you to go back to Amazon and write reviews. We've got to get this up there so... This is for leaders and these executives, and they need to be trained, all of them. <laughs> oh, and I think in November, we're doing a webinar with myself and the co-author, James Bristow, who is an executive who passionately believes in your role. So look for that to come. You might want to attend that webinar. All okay. right, anyone else? <laughs> Let's give some away today. <laughs> All right, Lisa, you want to get me to give one away? I'll give one away today. Lisa, I'll give it to you. Lisa, I'll give one to you yeah, and we'll give one other name. So, Malia, you've got to get her name. Got it. And then, Malia, do you want to pull a name? Will oh, someone else will get a copy when it's hot this off? Is so, this is so funny. Okay, let's see. I'm going to go I know. Where? My team always says now, Joan. You're always telling everybody we're going to do this and we're going to do that on the webinar. So, Valerie, Valerie Gilliam. All right. Valerie Gilliam. We'll get a copy when it's hot off the press. Again, the name of the book, The Executive's Competitive Edge, Why You Need to Leverage the Talents and Time of an Executive Assistant. There. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Bye. All right. I'll see you all next month. <laughs> Bye. Have a great day.